What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Review for Vinland Saga Season 2. This is Episode 7, and with me, as always, I have Loose Paid. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, so th this episode in particular mainly focuses on Kettle uh, and, you know, most of his family, I guess. But we also get more screen time with uh, Arnhel. Oh, Arnhade. Arnhild. Arnhade. Yeah, Arnhade. Yeah, Ar Ar Arnhade. Yeah, okay. So, um who is, of course, the, the slave woman that I, Einar uh, interacted with uh, earlier on in this season. But now, like, we get to see more screen time between the two, like, interacting with each other. Uh, about, like, uh, how I, Einar and Thorfinn are able to, um, you know, make make their own uh, wheat, wheat field thanks to, what was it? Well, with the help of the old man lending them the, ho the horse uh, by helping them do the chores and, and stuff. And uh, of course, um, you know they go their separate ways uh, with uh, Arnheid. Uh, well, I, going 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 back to the service of who she was working for. Of course, she gets uh, slapped and berated for interacting with I Einar. Uh, of course, you know because you know she's a slave. There's nothing she can really do about it. So, um, and we get a you know just only very brief screen time with uh, Einar and Thorfinn just seeing the progress of uh, of their wheat field just pretty much in the, you know in their early stages and <laughs> and of course like you know a after like uh, you know, like like a humorous brief moment of them of Einar pretty much uh doing a prayer of you know of wanting the fields to uh, you know, to grow prosperous so they can so, you know, sell all their product and buy their freedom later. But you know, Einar also uh, is thinking about uh, if he can, he can uh, really buy Arn Arnheit's freedom soon, or soon, soon after they free themselves. Yeah, I do like how it seems like Thorfinn is is uh, finally starting to um, enjoy life more and is kind of gotten out of the. Uh, uh, gotten over kind of the depression he's been in and it has more of a uh, it seems like he he's finding is, is starting to find more meaning in his life now mm -hmm. yeah and it's it's definitely a nice change of pace for him to uh you know to go go through these changes so of course in a bit of a humorous manner because he's he's still new to uh to most of the stuff that he's doing you know all the stuff he's learning particularly like you know he's never farmed or uh, or grew anything at a farm before so uh but yeah it's it's definitely some um uh some significant amount of progress for thorfinn in particular yeah um but at the beginning of this episode of the episode two we kind of get um uh, we get snake and the other uh guardsmen uh a scene with them where it shows that they have found like these footprints i guess uh that were supposedly left by uh, thieves that have been stealing from Kettle's farm, and uh, we find out later in the episode that they have captured uh, the the well, at least the two the, the two people they suspect are the uh, actual thieves. Um, but before this, we actually get an introduction to uh, Kettle's other son, uh, Thorgel, uh, who's apparently been away because he's been fighting in a in the in a war, I guess. Um, and uh, now he's returned, and he's kind of like the polar opposite of of the kind of person that I, I think it was, uh, yeah, Omar, like the kind of person Omar is like Omar is like tries is trying to become like a strong warrior, but Thorgel like already is that, that kind of person supposedly. Um, and is just like, uh, he, he's, he's already kind of like that. So I, I find that kind of interesting how like Omar is, is he wants to be that wants to be like that, but it feels like he's, He's just not really like cut out to be that kind of a person, but Thorgel just seems like naturally that that sort of person. Yeah, because he's, he, I mean, he's physically built to be like yeah. this, you know, this kind of soldier. Uh, well, well, Ol Olmar, like he, he's, I mean, he, he still has his issues, particularly like you know he's. Yeah, because you know, I mean, he, as we see like, in this in the episode, like when he gets presented with that necklace of uh, the ears, the ears from the Englishmen, he just kind of recoils at it and is just horrified by it whereas i feel like somebody like thorgill would just you know kind of uh, they like kind of rebel in something like that he wouldn't really be uh 
uh, he, he wouldn't really be hard he, or just kind of phased by something or anything like that, obviously. Yeah. And of course, Thorgirl also mentions uh, uh, like an old tale that uh, about his father being like they call him like the Iron Fist, Iron Fist kettle. Uh, yeah. kettle. Yeah, he's, uh, because uh, they mentioned that, you know, he that he used to be like this fierce warrior who fought uh, in battle uh, some years ago before uh, before they were born. Uh, but of course, uh, it's it's a bit debatable because like, uh, I, I, I guess like, uh, uh, what was it? K Kettle k kind of denies this well, in a way. I mean, we learned or... later on in the episode that, that apparently those, I guess those tales were somewhat, I mean, I guess exaggerated or something. Um, that it might not be a hundred percent true, um, and especially yeah. based on like what we know of Kettle, I'm pretty sure it's it, it might not be. Although it could be, I guess you know people. I I guess what this arc really does try to emphasize is that like people can change from who they used to be in the past. So it's possible that Kettle maybe he did used to be somebody like that, but he's not that it kind of person anymore. Yeah, and this this of course. Uh, gets us into the next scene in which snake apprehends like the two thieves uh, that were stealing from kettle's farm which uh which turns out to be like you know these two uh young siblings i think one of them's a 12 year old boy i, I forgot both names, uh, the uh, boy's uh, name was sutra um i forget what his sister's name was um but yeah his name was like his name was sutra or something like that yeah um, and, and of course um yeah, they, they pretty much go through like this. I would say it's kind of a mock trial of sorts of trying to get the these kids to confess uh, to you know the, their thievery, and they they mention the kids mentioned that you know that uh, their father you know is indebted to uh, to Kettle, but of course uh, they, he went missing like uh, for the past year while he was off at work, I guess selling selling something. Uh, from the farm, but he never uh, managed to come back, and this led to like uh, you know the kid's family just pr pretty much like you know um, going into hard times soon afterwards. So they resorted to stealing because they didn't. I guess they didn't. They weren't making any money from uh, their father being missing. Yeah, apparently uh, the the father was somebody that was actually indebted to um, to Kettle and owed him money. And uh, Thorgill speculates that it's possible that the, the father could have been killed because of, I guess, maybe the debts he owed or something. Yeah. And, and of course, uh, Kettle himself, he's pretty much moved by these kids' story and feels some amount of sympathy for them. They go, they go through this extreme method of wanting to cut off each of their arms, which is, uh, uh, which is like I said, it's a bit extreme. But um, before Thorgill, no, not, not Thorgill, it's uh, Ket Kettle can really uh, intervene his uh i guess his butler right or is it his i, think, uh, I, I forgot his, the guy's uh, name was pat patter um he's apparently somebody who is i guess maybe partially owns the farm or something i guess um yeah so he he pretty much uh, suggests that uh, instead of like having you know this kit you know both kids like uh, have their arms cut off he, he suggests like you know like having them just work the farm to hope you know to help pay off the de debts as punishment enough but of course uh, he also suggests that um that they should that each of them should take a beating uh which is i mean it's not as extreme as like getting their arms cut off but it's still you know extreme considering they like they're willing to i don't know physically brutalize these kids for just you know for just stealing you know stealing wheat whatever it is they sold yeah um they they basically say that they should each be beaten i guess 10 times um but then when the brother uh, sutra hears this he just he volunteers to have him take the beatings for his sister and so that they would beat him like 20 times uh yeah and uh thorgill initially was the one who was going to beat him uh, and he he beats him once, and it's it's you know of course Thorgil's like oh I'm not going to beat him too hard, but uh, of course when Thorgil hits him, it just kind of sends him flying. Uh, so he it, it almost seems like if he were if he was going to beat him, he'd probably kill him. Uh, so that's why I I think that uh, Kettle intervenes and decides to do it himself. 
I I mean, he's still it, it's still brutal yeah. nonetheless because we see the aftermath of the kid just. I mean, he he, he had all he had his face just I guess. But it's probably I, I thought they would. He it's would probably play. the best outcome, honestly, considering the alternatives. Um, it seems like there really wasn't much else. That, I think it's probably the, uh, the probably more of the merciful uh, thing that could have been done in that scenario, I suppose. Um, yeah, it, I mean, if Thorgil continued beating this kid like nineteen more times, yeah, he would have been yeah. dead in, in the most worst way possible. But like, I didn't think that he was gonna you know hit him in the face or what whatever he you know i thought he was just gonna hit him like in the back or something yeah. but it's it, yeah it, but it's too much to hope for depending on like how i don't know how like how these public punishments go but yeah it's just it gets to the point where like you know kettle like feels a sense of regret over his, over what he's done and surprisingly he gets in bed confessing to well well uh oh what Arnaid. was it um Ar Arnhaid, Arnhaid of all people, and which, which is a little bit surprising considering that like I I thought that Ar Arnhaid would eventually get together with Einar, but this this whole thing complicates things yeah, after I, seeing this. I suspect this is something that's probably possibly could have been happening for a while, uh, considering like we you know it, it seems like Kettle is kind of used to this uh, during this scene, like he's maybe used to uh, just kind of. Uh, kind of telling Arnhade like everything or just as I, I guess just kind of like you know just tell it just I don't know like confiding in her uh, so I, I feel like obviously this must have been going on for a while um, I, I I don't know like it, it's I, I remember this from the manga um, but there yeah I was a little bit like I was also a little bit surprised when I saw this but I, I feel like it's not any kind of like romantic relationship it's it's mostly just uh i i don't know i feel like it's just a uh, kettle like using her in a way so that he can i uh, he, he could you know maybe he feels like she's the, the only person he can i guess tell his true feelings to because obviously he has some kind of a he, he obviously has like an image of sorts that he kind of needs to uphold so he can't like he can't really express himself like this around probably even his wife so he just does does this with a slave woman, I guess. Um, and I feel like Arnhade probably more so takes pity on him, if anything, I guess, I suppose. Um, I kind of doubt there's any kind of romantic feelings in, in, in between in between them. Um, but it has been a while since I've read this part of the story, so I, I could, could be wrong, but I feel like that's, it's probably not anything romantic or anything like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the episode, yeah. but it was, it was a pretty interesting episode of, you know, finally getting into some character development with, uh, with Kendall in particular, because we don't, we don't really see him that often, not to mention that, you know, this is the first time that uh, we've seen a significant amount of screen time with, uh, Ar Arnhade as well. And what her role, uh, is, or, or, you know, of course, what her relationship with, uh, uh, with Kettle in particular is now that we know. Yeah. Which, I. Uh... Yeah, I, I feel like most people would be surprised by that, but yeah, I, I thought it was a pretty good episode. Another slower, of course, slower paced episode, but it was like like you said, I thought it was good because it developed Kettle as a character, which is a character I didn't really, you know, but I, I feel like a lot of people might not have expected to get any kind of development or anything like that. But I like how this arc is focusing a lot more on the side characters and kind of fleshing them out as well yeah and 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 of course it, yeah it, it is a good balance between like just uh switching between the Thor Thorfinn and I and I and I and uh with some of these other characters that are introduced yeah and and also not not to mention that you know they sacrificed one episode to focus more on Canute as well yeah um I will also say I do remember like based on the episode previews I uh, I do remember this part of the story from the manga and I'll say this is probably the the next episode is kind of going to be somewhat of a culmination of of what this, this some some of the things this arc has been building to with Thorfinn's character uh so it's 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 gonna be probably one of the I, I'm sure, like if if it's what I think it is, it's going to be one of the best episodes of this, if not the best episode of the season. Of course, the season still has a ways to go, but 
uh, it, this was a really good moment from the manga, so I'm, I, I have some pretty high expectations for the next episode. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, I, I don't really have too much else to say about this episode, though. I don't, I don't know if you have anything else to say about it. Yeah, it was it was an interesting episode. Uh, good, uh, another good deviation episode uh, away from both Einar and Thorf Thorfinn to focus on the, some of the new characters that we were introduced to earlier, but we never had the chance to see them uh, more prominently until like right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, guys. So that all being said, uh, until next time, we will see you all later.